Welcome everybody to a brand new series here at Chart Addicts called Conversations with a Chart Addict Student. We got a very special guest in the house today. Our very own David Takala is in the building. Welcome, David. How's it going? Living the dream. Yes, sir. Always. <laughs> it's, it's great to have you on the podcast finally. Thank you for having um, me. For the folks that are listening at home, this new series is going to be geared towards uh, con conversing with our current Chart Addicts you know, students that have been learning trading for the past year or two. And we just want to talk about their journey. We want to talk about the progress that you've been making and uh, maybe add some value to the folks at home in their journey. So David, can you tell the folks at home a little bit about you? Like, what do you do for a living? What is your, who is David Takala? <laughs> so um, honestly, if you ask Roy or pretty much any of my other friends, they'll tell you I'm a, a music producer and a mix engineer. And like, that is my, like my passion in life is music uh, production and audio engineering. Um, aside from that, like, as far as like paying my bills goes, I work at a smoke shop here in Richmond. I work there like 30 hours a week right now. And then I freelance mixing and mastering and production as well. Honestly, it pays a lot better. It's just not as consistent because the clientele doesn't be like, they don't, not everyone buys some mixes every week, but if they did, I would just, I wouldn't work at the store at all. And then like somewhere in the mix, I just learned how to trade and now we're like I got funded this fall and I'm gearing up to quit my job in the next month or two because of that there you go so yeah uh, you missed over the videography part. oh and the videography yeah. yeah as far as like uh, streams of income go I for pretty much anyone watching any chart addicts content anywhere um, starting with I would say the most notable would be the James Storms and Q Banks podcast after James did his 200k day I, I recorded that edited it and then pretty much everything from then on if you guys see a video come from chart addicts I'm the one behind the scenes um, yep. turning it into like a cohesive story it was the Alex and Raul podcast you chopped up you chopped up the uh, Q Banks and James Storms you chopped up the world record trading stream yes. where we broke the world record for charity yes so yes. if you guys have seen the all like all of your favorite content at chart addicts david was responsible for kind of piecing it together and so here he is in the flesh so you've had honestly what i, what I would say is tremendous growth in the past year in terms of your trading mm -hmm. can you walk us through your trading journey how you got in, involved in trading and then where you are now yeah for sure so my first like well actually this kind of goes back pretty far so like as a kid, my dad would always have, he would just have, like, stock alerts on the news just, like, going. Or Money Madness, you know, the dude, uh, what's his name? You know who I'm talking about. Uh, the yeah, bald yeah, dude yeah. with the, who, he'd be on fucking. On, I, I know, just, I like, know who you're talking going about. Going crazy all uh, day, Jim Kramer. Day. Yeah, Jim Kramer. So, my so, dad so. would watch Jim Kramer religiously growing up. So, like, I always knew that, like, financial markets were a thing, but I, as a kid, I wasn't really interested in it at all just because, like, I don't know, it just wasn't, it didn't appeal to me because I was, like, six, seven, eight, right? Like, yeah, most eight-year-olds aren't nah. like, Dad, <laughs> let me. <laughs> <laughs> turn real. on jim kramer <laughs> exactly so like i knew it was a thing and then when i got to college um our, our very own joseph tesfe he was the first person to like really like get me to like yo you should check out this forex trading stuff and i was like word sounds good and then that kind of i like i got exposed to iml and stuff but i never joined iml personally i know i know you joined iml and a couple other people i know joined iml i never personally joined um, just because I had a lot of stuff going on at the time and I wasn't fully interested. And then, uh, like a year or two later, I was just like hanging out with Roy and he was like in the works of like developing what chart, what you guys know as chart addicts today. And I just like saw that he was really trying to do everything right as far as like education goes and like, like, um, the quality of service you pay for the price that you pay the whole nine yards. So that's what really made me actually like get into trading was when Roy started chart addicts. I'm more open to learning new things when I learn from someone I like, I respect already or like know personally pretty well. So, um, and then I would say last summer so summer 2020 was when i started taking it more seriously and then i think this time this time last year i blew like probably like two grand just like funding 500 hundred dollar accounts trying to flip them not really like properly risking or, or properly leveraging or anything like that like we did the 500 to 5k challenge and then like i started out good and then a couple trades in i kind of just got greedy and blew it and then I, just, I learned from that. And then as the Expert Trader podcast started, like, gearing up, I was listening to it more and, like, learning more from just, like, people that had gotten, like, miles past what I ever imagined possible with this trading shit and just soaking up that knowledge. Plus, starting to work as a videographer for Chart Addicts, like, having all this content just coming through here and I have to go through every single second of it to find, like, where's the goods parts, where's the dead spaces. Like, I soak up all the information and I have to listen to everything like multiple times like when i went through the 24-hour live stream i probably watched all that footage at least five or six times 
Mm-hmm. It's not a one and done thing. It's like, and I'll, and I'm like used to that now at this point because like recording and mixing, bro, you know, I listen to the same shit over and over and over and over again. So yep. it's not like a problem with me, like psychologically, like it doesn't bother me, but it's like, that is getting in great, like drilled into my brain <laughs> in the most effective way possible. So <laughs> as I started editing more for Char Addicts this summer, um, I really set my eyes on getting funded. And then I set a goal, I think starting in August, I was like, I'm going to get funded by my birthday, which is September 24th. And I ended up getting the login credentials for the funded account in the morning of my birthday. That was the first big, real big milestone with me, like at least. And then just yesterday, I got my first withdrawal from the funded account. So now we're here. There's still a lot of room for improvement, but this is like, like I said, this time last year, I was blowing two stacks instead of making anything. <laughs> so yeah. like, that, that, that's a lot of progress as far as I'm concerned. No, that's a ton of progress. So just to kind of recap, summer 2020, you were just kind of getting your feet wet uh, with trading seriously. You were funding these accounts, trying to flip them, and you were still going to get a, getting acclimated to how you should use a strategy and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then just recently on your birthday, not too long ago, you got funded. Mm-hmm. And then yesterday you had your first withdrawal. Um, do you want to talk about which company that you're using? Yeah. So I went through FTMO and I did their $50,000 funded account. This actually was a little bit of a, a crazy thing. So I got it. I got the account login like on my birthday and then I started trading it the next week. And then that week there was a server freeze. And I'm pretty sure a <laughs> lot of people were aware of this, but like at one point during that server freeze, I was like four lots deep on a US 30 short. <laughs> I went to close a couple of the positions and then move the rest to break even. And as soon as I swiped on my MetaTrader to like modify the position, it just froze and it wouldn't let me close my shit. And I was like, "Uh oh, this is not good. And then it didn't unfreeze for a little bit. And by the time it unfroze, like everything hit SL. I was down like 4.5%. Wasn't properly risking, but at the same time, like I, like I was very confident in the analysis. So I, I threw a little extra and um, I, I avoided that max daily loss by like 0.3% on the first week of me having this funded account. And that was like, psychologically, that didn't help at all. Like, it's like Ted said on the stream, just getting a win at the beginning of the week is huge for your for your mentality. You're like, okay, bet I started off with a win, like let's go a little harder. And then you kind of like build it up from there. And well, shit, I'm down 5% basically already. Like I'm kind of deep in a hole. What am I gonna do? I'm not about to lose this funded account the first week I have it. So then I, I, I shouldn't have taken another tra- trade that day because I had like, three hundred dollars of wiggle room to work with but i took a trade anyway it ended up slapping for like i don't know like an extra three percent so i pulled myself out a little bit and i stopped and then the next week i went back in and then with the withdrawal i ended up it was like i think plus ten percent or something so it wasn't like huge but at the same time it was like i didn't lose the account and i managed to like bring myself like overcome that sort of that hurdle of just being like shit i'm really deep in this hole like I but i definitely am not gonna give up on this shit because i'm not about to do another fun challenge like i put all this work in like for sure. It's going to I'm going to make it pay off. You know, the whole point of this uh this podcast is to make things very relatable to the folks at home because a lot of folks just want to get funded and a lot yeah. of folks that are funded that have lost the account just want to get their first withdrawal. Yeah. So what do you feel like was the shift that happened between summer 2020 where you're blowing these accounts and the way that you're trading today? What do you feel like was that big shift and what do you feel like helped you get there? It's kind of a combination of things. For one, it has to do with like how I just learn things in general. It's not not, not necessarily has to do with trading, but it's just how like if I want to learn a new skill or a game or whatever it is, like the way my brain works, I relate it to something I already know really well. So as I was learning how to trade, I feel like I've probably brought this up to you a couple of times because like we make music together, but like I relate trading and mixing to each other a lot, even though they're completely different things. Mixing and trading are both 50% technical, 50% creative. And because of that, and also the fact that like no one trades the same, everyone has their own approach to it, but everyone's trying to make money. No one mixes the same. Like if you talk to any engineer, like, if you talk to three different engineers and give them like a song and be like, yo, mix this, I promise you all three of them are going to approach it differently. It'll probably come out pretty similar and they're all going to have a good mix, but like the way they went about it is going to be completely different. So having that in mind, plus knowing what it took for me to teach myself uh, how to mix and produce to like a proficient level throughout four years of like not having a mentor or anything just kind of like mostly learning off YouTube and asking mm-hmm. a few people here and there for tips like I was like well if I can do that by myself in four months or in four years and get to like the point I'm at now then with the help of chart addicts and like having y'all just like literally being there every step of the way I'm like this is this I can know I can do this like I know what it takes to like become proficient at a skill I just need to like have that like long-term mindset of I'm going to get there eventually. It might not be right now, but I will get there. And that has benefited me more than anything is like relating it to 
just like learning any other skill in a, in a proficient sense. Um, like it's, it's kind of weird the way I explain it, but like, it's just how I learn things and being able to relate it to something I knew so well helped me learn more. And that in combination with going through all the expert trader podcasts, editing all the content, and also just being super involved with the Terps and Caicos group chat, that helped a lot because, you know, just having people around you that are, that are doing what you're doing makes you want to do it more and get better at it. Um, yep. And I feel like it helps you learn faster. Okay, guys, so really quick, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Clearly, I'm no longer in the podcast room. I'm, uh, I'm at my house in my home studio. And I don't know why I completely forgot to mention this, but the biggest factor um, and reason as to why I've gotten to the point that I'm at with trading is that throughout college, basically, my dad was assisting me with my bills. And the whole deal we had the whole time was that as soon as I graduated and as soon as that last lease ended and like time was up, I was on my own. As soon as I graduated, which was last December, I, I, I really had to like figure some shit out. And I did. And I basically got a job at a store for like immediate relief and then saved some of those paychecks up to do the funded challenge and then got funded. Now, you could say like, why didn't you just get a job in the major that you studied? Like, that's what most people do, right? Yeah. Well, for me, I went to art school. So that wasn't really a very lucrative path, shall we say. My major was kinetic imaging, and that basically encompasses animation, video effects, special effects, motion graphics, motion capture, sound, video art, stuff like that. It's a really dope industry, and if you get a job at like a place like Pixar or something like that, then you're, you're chilling, and honestly, that sounds like a dream job, but at the same time, for me, I didn't love that craft enough to put up with learning it to a proficient level for me to get a substantial job in that industry. And also while I was at school, I was teaching myself music production and audio engineering. And that honestly like took priority over my schoolwork sometimes, but it paid off in the long run because I freelance it now and it makes more money than my job at the store does when it pays. The only problem is, like I said, the clientele isn't as consistent. So I got the job at the store for like to pay the bills guaranteed and then throughout that whole time i was editing all the podcasts and stuff for chart addicts plus the 24-hour live stream recap focusing on my own trading and basically just hustling as hard as i could because that was the situation i was in and i just knew i had to make something happen so really i saw that i only had one way forward and i thought this was it so i just made it happen but like i said i don't recommend learning how to trade out of desperation it's really it's like if it works it works but if it doesn't work you could be fucked so yeah, proceed with caution. Oh, but also for real, to truly, truly succeed with this trading shit, you got to be bullish on yourself. If you're not, and you don't have that confidence that you can do this and learn the skill, you're not going to get there. And that's really all it comes down to. So that Keiko's group chat is a small local group that, that we formed. And these are all friends that we've had over the years that got into trading. And then we built this small community where we really engage and interact in terms of trading. And so that's what you're saying played a huge role. The chart addict system is really focused on like working one on one with somebody and really having somebody there to bounce ideas off of. Do you feel like you would have been able to get to where you are as quick if you know you didn't have that resource? Yes, just because like so like I use the Kegos chat um as far as motivation goes, but like when I'm trading, I mute it. Oh, not just the not the chat, but just actually having a resource like a coach or somebody to be able to bounce ideas off of. I definitely would not be where I am now. That I know for a fact, I would still be in this trial and error stage like I was with making beats when I was so like I think about it pretty much like hand in hand with my journey of learning how to like produce music is like I didn't I was really stubborn about asking people for help because I was young and I was like, I can do this shit myself like man. But like I just like at some point I caved and then YouTube became my main teacher. And then I met like Ray and Kenny, you know, the the goats around here for engineering and they taught me a lot. And then. They gave me some resources. So, like, if I had just, like, not been stubborn and asked for help earlier on with that, I would have, like, my journey with music production would have, I feel like, would have been expedited the same way my tr learn my journey, like, learning how to trade and become proficient and, like, consistently profitable was expedited with the help of Chart Addicts. Having this is, a not, a, this is not a paid ad. No, it is not. <laughs> so, David, you obviously have an advantage because you have to edit the footage for the Expert Trader podcast, and you're, so you're watching it five or six times. But for somebody who doesn't have that same, is not in that same position, how can they still use those podcasts to be able to get the most out of their trading? Not in like a, oh, I just watched this and it made me better, but like really use the content to make them better at trading. You learn anything with repetition. So like, and I get, I get forced, rep, not forced repetition, but like, it's more or less like forced repetition because I'm editing it. Um, I would say like, 
since you guys don't have to edit it, since it's like I'm doing that and then it's posting on YouTube and all you have to do is watch it, I would just sit there and take notes for real. Like if you, depending on how you learn, because everyone learns differently, but like if you learn w really well from writing stuff down, do that while you're watching the video and then go back and watch it again and take more notes on everything you missed. Just because like it'll sort of like print in your brain better rather than just like watching and leaving it in the background just to like have background noise or whatever. Um, just okay. interactive and like, focused how do i say this like focused viewing of whatever subject you're trying to learn like a lot of people i feel like when they go to watch something on youtube they'll watch some of it and they'll be into it for the first five minutes and then they kind of like oh they look at their phone oh like like someone calls them from the other room they come back and they finish watching the video but like they still miss 10 minutes of the video so it's like actually sit down put your phone away get a notebook out sit down if, treat it like a class like that's how i tell people like when they're like what's chart addicts i'm like think think of it as like you're going to some sort of school and paying for them to teach you that's literally what it is it's educational course plus coaching that's yep. like the best way to describe it so i'm like tr treat it like school and just take notes be as attentive as possible and to be honest like wanting to know how to trade like that desire is like imperative because if you don't want to do something you're not going to do it in the long run like i come to realize that about myself and a lot of people that like they might have like some mild interest in something but then they get into it and they realize oh there's way more to this than i thought i don't like it as much i definitely don't like it enough to put up with all that shit so um on to the next thing like right. if you don't have that like i really want to learn how to trade and master this craft like i feel like that's something you have to figure out before you like if you have problems trading and like the root of it is you just don't want to do this shit then you know maybe it's not for you but at the but at the, like the base of it you have to want to do it and then on top of that once you want to do it then use that desire to your advantage and like use that energy to like uh, pay attention more when it comes to the education and the podcast and all that stuff and just take active notes interact with the content that you're viewing it it really helps you retain information david what do you feel like are the most important qualities for a trader to develop to get to the point where they're actually making profits so you noticed you named one of them, which is the desire level to actually want to put up with this stuff so that you can improve. But what do you feel like are the other qualities that have made you successful in trading? I would have to. It's kind of like it's not to the scale that James said, because I'm not doing what James is doing. But he he's like he's not afraid to take risks. And like like money is very it's like necessary to live. But at the same time, like that four hundred dollars I put up for the funded account, I didn't think about it. I was like. Because I know what's on the other side of it. If you like really just pushing out all of the bad what ifs and focusing on the goods helps a lot. Not that you can't like be aware that like yo like you should be aware like yeah I could lose all this money and if like I'm in a position where losing this money is actually gonna fuck me royally in the long run, you probably shouldn't take that risk, you know. But at the same time, like if you're gonna take that risk, then don't think about the negatives because that that like that clouds your mindset and like you should second guess yourself. And then you're just kind of like, wait, do I actually want to do this? Do it like, am I actually gonna, should I actually take this trade? And then that leads to bad decision making. You might close a winner early, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, yeah. Okay. So David, if somebody's watching at home and they're sitting where you were sitting last year uh, in 2020, and they're like, they're trying, trying, trying. What advice would you give them to save them that 12 months that you had to go through and kind of get them on track instantly? What would the what would advice? Or sorry, what advice do you wish that somebody would have gave you back then that would have turned it all around? Listen to Roy and O. <laughs> Just do it. All right, for me, what I was doing, I was like, I would take signals and then my own trades. And then I would still end up not making any money because my own trades are like mixed into that, um, those profits and most of them were losers at the time. So I was blowing all the profits that the signals were making me. And I was just like, yeah, I can, I can do this myself. Like whatever. It was kind of this like bullheaded mentality that like, of just like stubbornness of being like, I'm going to do this shit myself and I'm going to make it happen. That sort of like bullheaded ego thing. I had to just like push it to the side and be like, all right, they know better. I'm just going to try their way. And then I did. And now we're here. So if you really like, if you're trying to do it your own way, like I was maybe stop and then try someone else's and see how it goes. And then if it works, then take that and whatever you learn from the positive side from your method, you just mix them and then you go from there and then you just build and build and build. Like that's what I do with mixing is I took like the majority of my vocal chain is Alex Tume's vocal chain. Alex Tume's Young Thugs mix engineer for people who don't know, but like he's like a goat in my mind and I learned a lot from him, but I also learned a lot from like my in-person and uh, mentors like um my boss at the studio i used to work at and stuff so i took a lot from everyone's methods plus my own experimentation and combined them to get the mixes that i do now 
and I do the same with trading. Like listening to everything that Anthony and Ted and Q had to say on the live stream and like taking everything I liked from each of them and the stuff I didn't like from each of them plus what I've already learned myself is just like helping me build this skill even more. So really it's all, it's kind of just like don't feel bad about taking notes out or plays out of someone else's book because like it's like Ted said on the stream is like he he put in this work and like made these courses so that your learning curve could be expedited so use it to your advantage people want you to win no one's it's not a competition there you go so what do you feel like are the qualities that you've seen us teach people that makes our method more successful like what are the qualities that you think that we stress that seem to be the the changing factor in people's success emphasizing the risk management and then just like not forcing it to like you guys don't have to flip these accounts like we're just trying to make money that that just you're just trying to make money that bare minimum not not that it's like a bare minimum but like it's enough for someone's brain to be like okay this is that's what i'm going for and if i see it i'm going to take it while i can and move on to the next one that i think helps more than anything and also the fact that chart addicts in general is like it's just we're here to teach you how to trade and that's it like if you don't want to learn how to trade then you shouldn't be paying for the subscription like you're not gonna you're not gonna get any compensation for recruiting more people just do it just learn how to trade that's it that's what we're here for and that that quality in and of itself is huge because i mean like when i started when i got into forex like there are three or four companies that were just straight scamming that like i lost bread to and also some of my friends got scammed on. So I was just like, yeah, that's that turned me off of it initially and didn't make me want to trade at all. And then I saw that Roy was like has a genuine service with Char Addicts that is gonna like actually take me to where I need it to take me. There we go. So first off, let me ask a let me ask this other question. How many pairs do you trade? How many instruments do you trade? One, but sometimes up to four. Okay. That's only if I see some trades that are fucking screaming at me, like, yo, this is the one. But I, I really just trade NAS. 100 um occasionally us 30 occasionally bitcoin and occasionally gold but i don't like gold or bitcoin like that like they they, <laughs> they be doing too much what um, advantage do you think that trading one instrument can give to the trader sitting at home so if someone's sitting at home and they're like no i want to trade you know five or six different things what do you feel like has been the greatest benefit for you for only sticking to one instrument? You just get you get used to how it moves and like the cycles that it repeats that it runs through on a daily basis and at like what times it makes said moves. And it's also just like less charts like going on in your head throughout the day. Like I feel like if I mark up three or four charts and I'm trying to keep them all straight in my head, it's just like it's too much. So many candles. It's just like what am I trying to remember here? It all gets confused and then if I just stick to one pair and I'm just looking at that one chart and keeping like following it throughout the week, then it's just like stuck in my head. I don't have to, I don't worry. I don't like, there's less stress when it comes to like, or keeping my biases straight on everything. It's like, if you only have one pair you're keeping track of, you're not like, all right, I'm, I'm long on this. I'm short on this. I'm long, whatever, whatever it may be. It's just like, I, I know it's just the experience with the pair is what really is like what helps a lot it's just getting to know it as and not confusing yourself with like more data inputs from like other charts and i feel like the fomo is huge for people because they're like the markets are always moving and there's so many pairs of trade and there's bread to make on all of them and they're all moving at the same time it's just like dude stop don't worry about all the other moves just pick your pair the one that works for you and take the money from it because at some point you're gonna get so good at it that you can just you like seriously rake off of it so it's kind of i mean i know people why, say why do you think people feel that need to want to trade so many different pairs because you're you can make money that's literally it just because you can make more money but like you also can lose a lot of money but people fixate on the profits and mm. i i do it too like i know i'm saying that because i've done it myself it's just like i'll be like oh shit like this looks like a good setup and so does this and i like i'll also calculate the profit too and that doesn't really help sometimes like the exact like, knowing like yo if both these trades slap i'll have you up this much like don't do that shit like Stick to one, take the trade. If it hits stop loss, it hits stop loss, move on to the next. If it hits take profit, it hits take profit. Like, take your money off the board when you see it. But, yeah, focusing on one pair is, especially for beginner traders, is, like, I feel like definitely the way to go just because you're not confusing yourself and there's less just less stimuli from the charts. And you're just, like, only have one thing in your head and you're only focused on that one thing. So, I mean, if I'm hearing that right, it's basically folks are too focused on outcome. They're yes. not focused enough on process. Yes. Which is something that um, yes. we kind of beat to death here at Chart Addicts. We talk about all the time. It's you have to obsess over the things that are going to make you money as opposed to just making the money. Because yes. if you only focus on making the money, then you're not going to do the things that you need to to, to actually make the money. Make the money. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So um, let's bring this back home to the folks uh, that are just sitting at home listening to this. 
what advice would you give them to make the most out of the content that we put out? Because you're, you're heavily involved in the new content that we put out on YouTube. And if you can just speak to that a little bit and just speak about the type of content that we're making, is it just for entertainment or are we actually trying to do something useful? And how should people be looking at this content and using it to get to where you are now? I would say the majority of it's all rooted in education as far as I'm concerned. For real, it comes down to education and just like displayed in creative ways. So like we're starting, we're going to roll out, we should roll out the Trades of the Week series. I would say like if you guys, that series, and you see like, damn, how are they catching all these pips? Go back through those trades and mark them up on your chart. R like back test it yourself. Because then you're just like, you're going to be like, damn, these are some crazy winning trades. Like how do I do this myself? Well, take that trade and break it down for yourself. Um, break down every single candle on it. Like what happened when, why it happened, the whole nine. Um, when it comes to podcasts, listen in, as intently as you can and take notes and don't be afraid to rewatch or re-listen. Because, um, I mean, those expert trader podcasts, they're like 45 minutes to an hour, right? So that's a lot of information, and I know for a fact you're not going to get that on the first run-through. Um, so definitely take notes. And then, for real, just, like, stay stay engaged with the socials and stuff because then you'll just be more up-to-date when all the new stuff comes out. And then I feel like, for me personally, when I'm viewing YouTube channels and stuff, the more consistent they are and um, the more I, like purposely try and keep up with their socials outside of youtube i'm more inclined to like stay connected with their youtube and i look forward to the new drops more so than i would be if i were to just like click subscribe and then leave it and you also just stay more in the loop because we'll we announce everything on um on instagram and stuff like that for real like this all the videos we're putting out like there is serious sauce in them so don't like i wouldn't just click on it for a background video unless you've already watched it once or twice you know like watch these videos with intent and um don't take it for granted. This shit is free. <laughs> yep. Like you said, like when people actually give it an intent listening to, that's when they realize how valuable it actually is. Some folks, they kind of like, they listen to a little bit of it. They might not get to the part that really clicks for them just yet. And they sort of just like, like you said, put it in the background, play it as background noise. And it doesn't really uh, affect their trading or it doesn't really help it just them with their click. progress. It's just in one ear, one out the other one, you know? So now that you're, in some people's eyes, you're quote-unquote successful in trading, <laughs> do you still feel the need to be around chart addicts? Do you still feel any value that you can gain from chart addicts after you've already reached the point that you're at? I'd, I wouldn't leave chart addicts ever, honestly. It doesn't make sense to me. Because it's like, yeah, I could just go out and trade by myself. But at the same time, it's like, one, these like the these are my friends for one, so I'm just like, that, that helps a lot. But also just having access to coaching if I want it or need it and just seeing, getting like ideas bounced off of everyone in the group chats, just that helps a lot too. When I'm not actually trading, when I'm like on the weekends, if I want to check out what everyone did, bet, perfect. And I love it for that, but not like when I'm in the moment, because when I'm in the moment, I need to be focused on my analysis. I don't need to see, like, all right, my biggest problem is like, I'll have a markup on NAS, and then I'll check Terps, and everyone sends a slightly different markup, but they're all pretty close. You know what I'm saying? But someone's like, yo, it's going to do this, 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 and then I'll read all that shit, and I'll be like, and I'll second guess my own analysis, and then I'll go back to it, and mine just slapped to the T, and I'm like, yo, I need to stop. It's nothing on them. It's just like, I need to just trust myself, because it's like, I'm, I've traded NAS for the whole year at this point, and for the back half of last year, so I feel like at this point, I have a decent like um understanding of how it moves and i just need to like trust myself and not take anyone else's um perspective into account except for yours and uh, <laughs> that's about it but like it's just a distraction it's just literally just another distraction it's kind of like to me it's like backseat mixing like i hate when people are backseat driving for people that don't mix like i, I really everything in music but like uh you know when you're like, driving and you have the gps and then you got someone in the back being like, yo, take, take a left. Road. Bro, no, take I that. fucking faster. know. I'm looking at it right here. That kind of deal. Like, yo, bro, you should use this EQ. No, dude. Let me do Let me do the thing. Let me mix. It's that whole deal. It's like, I got it. If we both make money, cool. That's what we're looking for. It doesn't matter how it plays out. We just both want to make money. Trusting your analysis is huge because then you just commit to your trades. So my biggest takeaway from that is like, if anyone's at home and you guys are involved in group chats with your friends and trading, just know that it's great to have that accountability with your friends. It's great that you guys keep each other accountable that when you don't feel like trading or you don't feel like getting on the charts, someone is always there to, to help keep you accountable. But when it comes time for you to actually trade, it's only you and the charts. It's you and your strategy. It's you and your decision making. And letting other people affect your decision making is what hurts most traders. Because you've already built the memory bank for your strategy. You know what you're seeing. And if you don't follow that, then you're doing yourself a disservice. So if anyone's at home with their, you know, and they trade in trading groups with their friends, 
allow it to fuel you in times where you're learning, allow it to fuel you in times where you're kind of learning from each other's mistakes. But when it comes time to play the game, nobody else can fight in that arena for you. You got to step in that ring for yourself yeah, and you 100%. better be ready for it. So David, I really want to thank you stopping by the podcast. Thank you for having me, brother. Uh, David, if you guys don't know, like, okay, obviously you guys can tell by this podcast, David's a really smart guy, but it, what he did really wasn't special other than the fact that he had an intense desire to do this. And so day in and day out, you know, him watching these videos and actually picking up the sauce, he could have treated these podcasts like a job. Been like, okay, I'm going to literally like just listen to this as mumble and just piece it together and send it. But the desire to actually want to get better is what makes David successful. And I think that if you guys are watching at home, those are the key qualities that you can take away. You have to have that desire that he talked about at the beginning. You have to have the confidence to you know, to tune everything out and to stick to what you know. And you really just have to have the confidence to play your strategy. So David, really good takeaways. If you guys are watching at home, I know that you took something away from this. And uh, thanks again for stopping by. Thank you, boss.